So what we've done here at the very end is we've started to use some of this jQuery mobile code, these shortcuts. You saw a moment ago when I had an earlier version of the project, well, yeah, everything's on one line. It wasn't broken apart. But the point is I wanted to separate it into whole different screens. Well, by using data role attribute and setting it to page, now this section behaves like its own screen, its own page. But that doesn't work unless you've got the connections to jQuery Mobile. If I were to go over here and break the connection to these files that we connected to, that data role will then be meaningless, and the result is that. It looks the same, one screen. The colors are gone. The other styling, the basic styling is gone. It goes back like that. So data role, so the magic is not really data role. The magic is those three lines of us connecting to a certain style sheet and two JavaScript files. So I'm going to take that back. I'm going to take those little mistakes back. And then again, if I run this, then it, it works in that screen one is section one. Well, let's say I want to, um, the whole point of this is if I've got a screen, I want to maybe divide it up into different uh, areas. If you are looking at an app, oftentimes there's a top area, perhaps with a few navigation buttons, and then maybe a central main area with content, and then another area at the bottom of like a footer or other information. So at the very least, I want to see, can I divide up my screen into three different areas? So the way, we, the way we do that is in, OK, this section, this screen, let's wrap the header tag around this that says screen one. This is going to be up on the top of the, of the, of the app. At the head, at the top of the document, I wanted to say this. A couple of, press enter a couple of times and then create a footer. We'll just say here at the bottom. We'll put real content, of course, but I'm just uh, putting some temporary stuff. The idea is when I load it up in the web browser and then ultimately as a device on the device, uh, there's going to be an area at the top, an area at the bottom, an area in the middle. Screen one home, that's at the top in the header. At the bottom is at the footer, at the very end. Well, in the middle, we're going to use a tag called article. That might not quite make sense in the terms that we've been using so far, but just bear with me for a moment. OK, so article is going to be sandwiched in between. The stuff at the top of the screen, the stuff at the bottom of the screen, the stuff in the middle of the screen. Header, article, footer, in that order. That makes sense. At the top, the middle, and the bottom of the screen. We can say here, middle of the screen. to be very obvious header. Screen 1, home at top. Okay, That's really cool. It seems like we're able to divide up our document into different areas. Go ahead and save it and run it. See the result. Hmm, Not quite. Trick question. Because section worked by having a data role to further define how it should behave, simply by having these dividing containers doesn't necessarily mean they will look as we expect. So these also need some attributes. Header needs a data role attribute of header. Footer needs a data role attribute of footer. We're giving more definition. The basics is that this tag is putting something at the foot at the end of the document. But it doesn't really say anything about the design of it or the placement of it. 
the, the role of it? What does it do? Same thing for header. It makes sense that, okay, header is at the top, but not necessarily. It could be near the beginning of content, but not necessarily at the top. So we have to further define its role. We're setting the data-role attribute to say header, put it at the top. Data role footer, put it at the bottom. Article, unfortunately, is a little bit different, which you'll just have to memorize. This one is role, not data role, just role, main. And secondly, another attribute of class, ui-content. Um, it isn't as straightforward as simply data role main or anything like that. It is role. Now it's R O L E, not R O L L. It's not going to roll away. It has a role. Role of main, space, class. We'll cover classes and such later. UI dash content. That's an I, not a one, not an upside down exclamation point. UI dash content. Now when you save it and run it, it should behave a little bit more like we're envisioning. Perhaps not all the way there yet, but much closer than what I had a moment ago. I have now an area at the top that has been separated from the area in the middle, and then an area at the bottom. Not exactly at the bottom of the screen like I thought. Well, that needs one more attribute here. Footer, data role, footer, data dash position equals fixed. So this first attribute was saying the stuff inside of this element is at the bottom, but not necessarily all the way stuck to the bottom of the screen. Another attribute its purpose to position it somewhere. We're fixing it to the bottom area of the screen. And now when you save it and run it, it should get that footer and should stick it at the bottom no matter the size of your browser. So here it is. Well, all of this is working because, again, we're connecting to the jQuery mobile libraries. We're connecting to the shortcuts. All we need to write is data role footer, data position fixed, and it's down there. If I was writing this manually, with manually writing CSS and HTML and JavaScript, it would be dozens of lines of code, if not you know, tens of dozens of lines, to do that exact thing. And we did it simply by writing data role footer, data position fixed. It's at the bottom, always. I don't have to do any math and figure out um, percentages of how where it should fit and all of that that's good and bad of course to use a template because you start off everyone starts off exactly the same and maybe you want to customize it more which you can we will be able to completely customize all of this but I get I think at a, as a starting point no matter if you're a beginner intermediate or advanced frameworks are very useful to get you started and what your end result will be so in the beginning all of our projects might look very similar but then we will definitely deviate, and you will be able to customize it as you wish. Did that work for everyone? Did you all get a top header area, a middle area, and a footer area? No, I've, I've got a message that my file is open in another program, but I don't see it there. Hmm, OK. Let me check one moment. Is it
Right, so the um, screen that we're looking at here, imagine that this uh, had pictures and text and all of that stuff. Um, and we are able to uh, put more design here by just knowing the right um, jQuery code. Uh, we will visit a little later. We will go to jQueryMobile.com. There's the manual of how to use all of jQuery Mobile. For the moment, we'll just practice a little bit with some concepts that I have here. Let's let's further do this. Uh, up on the header, um, I've got here screen one home. Let's just simplify this, uh, just to say home. This is going to be our home screen, right? I don't have to be that obvious anymore to say this is the home screen. We'll say home, but I want to wrap a an H1, a heading number one, around the word home. I want this to have a heading like we've seen previously. The very, the very first thing, remember, on our other document, on day one, uh, we wrote something up in the header at the very top. Uh, in footer, um, I kind of want to do the same sort of thing, uh, just simply title it bottom, down there at the bottom. But this time I want to use an H4, number four. Uh, and then where it says middle, we will do H2 and say middle. It's good common practice for text in the header to be a heading 1 and text in the footer to be a heading 4. Therefore, we can use heading 2 and 3 in the main article. And it's jQuery Mobile, but it's still HTML. It's, it's called a jQuery Mobile, but it's HTML, so we can make notes. Whatever notes you want to make here, same thing as we've done before. Now remember about closing your, your, um, your comment code. So whatever notes you want to make here. Data role uh, activates the header, and we have h1 first. You know, whatever notes you want to make yourself are fine. Just make sure you write them properly inside of the, the note tags, the comment tags. How many H tags can there be? It goes up to six, I believe. So there's six different uh, levels of that. Okay, so a little bit of a difference here. If you save it and run it, design-wise, it's a little different. Now, what's up on the header has been centered. 
And what's down in the footer has been centered. And that was simply by also adding the H, the heading, either 1 or 4. So this is an example of, by knowing how jQuery Mobile works, I can create designs, I can create alignments, I can create an interface. It is going to be simple tags plus attributes that activate these features. In the middle, then it says middle. Let's say in the middle I want to create a paragraph. And I'll write go to about screen. Go to about. I, I want to have a button. I want to have a link that goes from this screen to the other screen. Well, we use the same tag we used last time, which makes hyperlinks. I want to make an A tag wrapping around that phrase. Go to about. href here's our note when linking to another screen in our project use its ID attribute We can have a unique identifier for every section, every screen of our website. So if I want to link from one section to another section, well, I use its ID. We don't have an ID in the other section. This other section here has no unique identifier. So at approximately line 33, where your other section is at, we add an attribute of ID and call it simply, let's say, about, lowercase. I've given a unique identifier to this section with new content. I want to link that button to this section, so I need to use the ID that I just gave it. In the href, then, we use the pound sign, and then the name of the ID. This section has an ID, no pound sign here. We're linking to that section, href, yes, pound sign. And so there we're creating a link. We're creating a button to go from one section to another. Save it and run it, see if that works. If you click the button, does it go to screen two? Let's see on mine. I'm going to run it. I see middle, go to about, I click it. It did go to the about screen. It doesn't look at all like I expected, but it did go to it. I can press back, and I'm back on home. I click go to about, I'm in a whole new screen. I'm in a whole new section. See how that works. A section needs an ID, and we can go to a section based on its ID. Well, before we go further, we should have IDs for all of our sections that we currently have. On our first section, our, our home section, that doesn't have an ID. So if we wanted to link back to it with another button, there's no unique ID. So OK, easy. Section data role page space ID equals any name we want here. And we will call this very creatively home. This is the home section. It has a unique ID now. If you know anything about CSS and such, yes, it's the same ID that you can use for CSS styling, but it also works as an ID in JavaScript and uh, as an anchor for links. It's multi-purpose. But now the home section 
has an ID of home. And then we should also label our third section. The third section, ID, contact. So a new, a different section with its own unique ID, its own content, its own separated content. This is an SPA, like I said earlier, a single page app. All of the different screens are in one file. Uh, all of the different uh, content areas of the website or the app are in one file. And when I look at it in the browser, home section, I can click the button, goes to the about section. I have no other button to get, I have no other way to get to the um, contact section yet. But do you notice also, well, in the home section, I've got uh, a top header, a bottom footer, and a middle content area, but I don't have that in my other sections. So yes, you would need to have the header, the footer, the article in the other sections. We will do that a little later, because I want to show something else here. This go to about button. I keep calling it a button. Does it look like a button? What does a button often look like? Like a button, a little thing to press. That doesn't look like any little thing to press. Okay, well, let's do this. Let's add an attribute to our href, to our a tag, that is. a tag, href, another attribute. Data role equals button. The role of this element, this a tag, is to behave like a button. Now save it and run it. Data roll button added to a plain old simple link becomes a button with a rollover effect, drop shadows, a little border edge, everything, which can be edited, of course. So by simply adding data roll, I don't have to write complex CSS. I don't have to be very complex myself. The framework does it for me. Here's another attribute, data-icon. I can add an icon into the, into the button. Now there's a list of 50 built-in icons for common tasks built into jQuery Mobile. And we can, of course, create our own icons later. Let's say on an About screen, uh, let's just type this one, User. User. Save and run that. This will activate the user icon, attach it to this button, and you get a little simple sort of universal user icon right there. And there's a bunch of other ones. Um, home would work great on a button to take you home. Right now it doesn't make sense because it's going to about. But just to show you, here's some other icons. Home, little house. There is um, mail, I think. Yep, a little letter. So if this was a button to send an email, data icon equals mail, there's the icon. If I want my own unique icon that pops open and such, OK, then I need to program that. But built in, I have a variety of, of little icons. I can do things like this, arrow dash r, that will create an arrow pointing to the right. Do I have all 50 memorized? No. But I can go look them up, and later on we will go to the official documentation to see what else we could do. What else we've got? I think there's one video. Or is it camera? Yeah, video. So there's a little camera. Yeah. Can you do multiple commands that say user, arrow, home, all of those things, or would that be too much? It would be too much. It would be too much because you wouldn't really want to put two different icons onto the same button because then you don't know, well, what is it doing? If I see user and video and mail, well, what does it do? All three or which one? 
So um, you don't really want to, but it is possible to put more than one icon on one graphic, but then it's confusing for the user. I'm just going to stick with user for the moment. Go to about. <coughs> and uh, then what I get is it's starting to come together as a real interface. If you are maximized on your screen completely like that, if it's really, really big, perhaps like a big tablet, if you resize your web browser a little bit, something like that, tall and thin to sort of behave like a mobile phone, something like that, right? Because mobile phones are often tall and thin like that. You can kind of resize your browser a little bit to give you a vague preview of what it might look like on a device. And we'll have other ways to do it with emulators and simulators and such. But here then, OK, I'm starting to create a mobile-friendly interface, stretching it, pulling it. They, uh, it, it, it changes to these various sizes. It responds. And that goes back to early on when we had this mobile-friendly viewport. We're saying, zoom it to 100. Don't zoom in and out. Stretch its width to the size of the device. And we get that. And here's your task for a moment. See if you can do what we did right now into the About screen. The About screen is completely barren, and the Home screen is nice. If there's a header, there's a footer, there's a middle, there's a button, do that now. Practice that. Try that on your own before I do it. Make your Screen 2 look as good as Screen 1. You should be able to from what we've done so already. So try that on your own a moment. If you're having trouble, call me over, but then I'll move on in a moment. Make your about screen to be looking as good as the home screen.
get that working? Did you put the required items? It should make sense in terms of, OK, well, my section of about only has section. I'm missing header, I'm missing article, I'm missing footer. So it's a matter of putting that in there and then setting the data roles. So I'll do that now. Oh, here's an advanced trick, copy and paste. And then change it to what it needs to be. So um, my um, about screen, it's all going to be the same in that I need an article, I need a header, and all of that, but then I just need to change the details. Question? I, I did copy and paste, but I thought that the command that we were telling it to go to user was the actual lines that, not the whole thing, so we have to... I don't so, get the question. So you know where it says attribute, href, and then it goes about, button, and then it has the user lines? Mm -hmm. In between page and article, that isn't that the command that tells it to go to user? It doesn't go to user. Data icon is the user. It goes to about. It goes to the about screen. href pound about is saying go to the about section. Data icon user is saying display the user icon. So if you copy and paste it, it's not exactly correct. You will have to change a couple of things. But you need an article, you need a footer, you need a header in the other section for it to fully work the same. So when I have here, I'm in home, I go to about. So now I've got an about. This is the middle, this is the about, bottom. And he's the data role. So home, about, and if you made a button to go back to home or to go forward to contact, that, that's fine. The idea, though, is that uh, the pros and cons of this, OK, a big pro, a big positive, is that I can quickly create an interface, top area, bottom area, middle area. The con or the negative is that it doesn't automatically trickle down to all parts of the design, right? The, this data, this section of contact, I have never, I haven't done anything to it, so it looks completely basic. It does not automatically inherit any of the design of anywhere else. And it's not so complicated right now with three screens to fix it. But if we've got a document of several screens, that's a little bit more effort. When we start working on our real app on Tuesday, uh, we will have to take that into consideration. How many different screens will my app have? OK, I need to create seven screens. Log in, update item, delete database. OK, I'm going to need to plan that and figure that out. And that's why we're going to have a pre-planning stage lecture. We shouldn't really just jump into the code to make an app. We should do a little planning. So we'll do a little planning lecture, then we'll jump into the code. So what I'm saying, that is, what I'm saying at is at the moment, um, I have to do that extra effort to make my, uh, my sections the same as the first section. Let's say I want to do something fancy that instead of having a big old button that says go to about, why not have a, a cool navigation bar? Why not have buttons at the top of the screen that I see to easily jump to home, about, contact? We can do that with jQuery Mobile relatively easily. Let's go to the section of our code for the home, the home section. That's at about line 13. And in the header, I'm going to add a navigation bar. In the header,
header after home before the end of header. <clears throat> I'm going to add a, a tag called nav for navigation. HTML, a lot about what it is, is there's the right tag for the right task. So there's a, there's a tag for a task. The task of this tag is to create a navigation element to create buttons to navigate. To upgrade it to look nice and to behave like a modern app, that's when the data role comes in. That's when the jQuery mobile comes in. And here it's called navbar. So the idea is that anything inside of a nav is supposed to be about a navbar. To make it look like a navbar, we use the data role navbar. And a navbar, navigation buttons, behind the scenes uh, is basically a, a, a set of bullet points. So we're going to use the tag to make bullet points, uh, which is an unordered list. That's a UL, not a 1, an L, unordered list. This is going to be a set of bullet points. Now, when this was being invented in 1989, no one had the great idea to call it bullet points. It's called UL, unordered list. Compared with an ordered list, it makes sense. But this is bullet points. And then each individual bullet point is a list item. Home. There's going to be a bullet point for the home button. There's going to be a bullet point for the about button. And a bullet point for the contact button. LI, that's not a one, it's an L. List item. This is an item in a list. This is an unordered list. It's in a nav bar. It's going to behave like bullet points. Actually, it's going to behave, it's going to be bullet points that will behave like a nav bar. This is it right here so far. In the header, we created a new nav element, set to data roll nav bar, three bullet points. Here they are. The bullet is removed because we, we don't want to actually see a bullet point in a nav bar. And it's on one row like this. Bullet uh, nav bar elements are linked, so we need to make links here. The home button will link to the home screen. The about button will link to the about screen. And the contact button will link to the contact screen. So these will have a tags, href attribute. And how do I link my home screen to the, my home button to the home screen? What's the code here? Hashtag home. The ID of where I'm linking to with the hash mark or the, the hash sign. ID home, so pound home. About has its own ID, so href pound about. And contact should have its own ID, so href pound ID or hashtag ID. Question. What's the question? Um, I thought there were quotation marks. The first home is a quotation mark, and then the second home only has well, no quotation marks. That's right. This home right here uh, is what's visible to people. 
so no quotation marks because that's that's what's visible to people. This one here is quotation marks because it's part of the attribute of href. So an attribute has to be in the format attribute equals quotes. So that's why there's quotes there. And we'll do the same thing for about. Pound about. And contact. Contact. So now when I save and run that, Look at that, now it looks like more of a nav bar in terms of equally spaced. They have little hover effects, little line dividers between them. I didn't have to manually create any of that code for the design. I've written HTML code for the structure of it. And because I've used the data role attribute here, it knows if there's an if there's a link inside of a bullet point inside of a nav bar make it look like this and the result is this which of course we can go in and change sizes and colors and all of that stuff but as a starting point here this is very very far advanced with very minimal code well um, it would be nice maybe also to add icons to these buttons if only there was a way to add icons to buttons. Oh, wait, there is. Data-icon. Home. Data-icon. Let's see what would be good. What we're using user for about contact. Maybe the little mail icon, email. If you misspell it, if it doesn't understand it, it'll just ignore it. Like that whoops, I misspelled email, so it's just blank. When you spell it properly, it it knows what you mean. Sorry, not email, mail. I always get that one confused. Okay, so a nav bar, a universal navigation area at the top of my screen. I might scroll up or down and look at content, but I'll have this nav bar at the top that I can click and then move to another screen. Again, the downside is, well, yeah, it looks amazing on page one. It looks amazing on home page, but it's not there automatically on about page. It's not there automatically on contact page. If I were to go to the about screen, it's not there because I never programmed it there my about screen doesn't have it this is another example where some copy and paste would be very helpful if you've got your code working properly if you've tested it we haven't gone to the contact screen yet or I haven't yet but if you set this up properly you should be able to go to the contact screen there's nothing there Contact. But uh, our A tag is linking to a uh, to unique ID of a section. It's updated to look like a real button. It's got an icon. It has automatically the behavior for clicking and roll over and all of that. It's very subtle, but do you notice this? When I'm on the home screen and I go to the about screen, there was a little bit of a fade animation. When I go back, a little fade animation. We have also the ability to add some simple animations with jQuery Mobile. 
here's a brand new attribute data dash transition there's about six built-in animations and you can make your own but we can do flip now these again also have to be added to each of the buttons because they could be different animations you have to add the data transition to those three bullet points that you made but just to see, just to see what these look like I'm adding data transition flip to each one of them so the idea is I click the about button and it will animate into a flip to the other screen and even better when I go back it automatically flips in the opposite direction just built in changing the speed and the frames or whatever can be done but that's a little more complex question yeah um, for the about page or the contact does it maintain the structure of h1 h2 h3 but yes good point in the other pages we would want to maintain an h1 and 2 and 3 structure for each one you don't want to use one h1 2 and 3 for the about for the home page and then 4 5 6 for the next one and 7 8 you can reuse the same h1 and 2 and 3 and such for each section let me see my result here so i'm on the home screen i'm going to click about i added transition flip flips go back flips back There's flip, there's turn, like the page will turn. So a different kind of animation to catch your attention. And here I've got, if you click on home, it'll flip. If you click on contact, it will flip. But if you click on about, it'll turn. You can have different animations for different buttons. Just to see what that looks like, a turn animation looks like this, like a page turn, sort of. I think we've got slide. That's going to slide into view. Which direction? We can control that. Slide up, slide down. A regular slide, I think, is to the left. Sliding. Here's one of my favorite ones. It's kind of extravagant, but if you select flow, check that one out. So if you've got it to working this far, very good. It's uh, coming along together very nice. It's an interface that uh, if you if you had never used HTML last time look how far we are now that we can create an interface buttons navigations icons all of that can be of course fully edited but uh, very quickly we're using a library to create an interface it's it's not cheating it is a it is a tool as a starting point because this doesn't do anything about creating a login system uh, sending an email to a client storing something to the database all of that will still be a lot of hand coding and all of that and it doesn't look how I want I want my colors I want it to be red and yellow not gray and gray and gray well we can change that of course I don't want that home icon I want my home icon we can do that but as a very quick starting point this is very far very advanced by using this framework and as I said we've got jQuery mobile we've got Sencha we've got Ionic we've got etc there's a lot of different ways to create an interface. They're all right and they're all wrong. Whichever one you want to learn and use to make a project is the right one. We're going to focus on one just so that we don't go in 20 different directions. And then you will be able to customize, of course. But let's take our second break at this point if it's not quite working. Uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes. We'll be back at 7.42. And we'll go on. Question? OK, I'll be with you one
with you one moment.